Okay, so we're starting the streaming, um, and I will go to here and just go grab a student, that one, right, and I'll have that there, which is my notes, and you will have that, right. Okay, so, um, right, so we're now live streaming, and I'll go into the chat and say, do we have anyone there watching? Not yet, but right. Okay, so uh, I'll start the session. So um, today we have maths, uh, maths education, so games for maths education. Uh, we have two papers, and we'll have um, Taria present first, and then Tom Morton second. Uh, and so Taria is, is presenting on Dragon Box, and uh, Tom Morton is going to criticise the Dragon Box paper if he, if he can. Um, and oh, that's not my phone. <laughs> oh, he, you were passing around. That's my phone. <laughs> so um, we were just passing around Dragon Box so people could see it if they hadn't had a quick squiz. Um, and then we'll reverse after um, the initial presentations, sort of on the hour, we'll reverse and you guys can take the other position. Um, I'll just... Yeah, that's turned off. Um, so, uh, in this session, we'll first present uh, kind of an evaluation of the research paper. Uh, and then we can discuss some of the aspects of, of both the evaluation and hopefully you guys read it and um, have some, some questions or some comments about its methodology and the, the ideas that it's presented and the way that it used the game. So, okay. Could you, could you up now? Mm. Uh, no, just that. Uh, the, the, so, yep. because I it's got the impression that I should first start and just present the paper. Yeah. So, yep. just a... An overview. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So, I had this mm -hmm. wonderful overview. This looks like quite a lot, but I was just, uh, I was my initial thought was that I was just going to skim through the different parts of the uh, article or Good. paper and yep. then show a bit yep. of uh, the Dragon Box in uh, regards to some of the theory that uh, was presented in the uh, in the article. And yep. then go through the questions that you suggested on the blackboard. Yep. So the paper has some uh, general introduction going through what algebra is, which is basically you need to balance the equation on both sides or the equation side. Uh -huh. And uh, the background for the the whole uh, paper was that they in Malaysia they had some uh, th there. The results, the uh, test results from uh, in, uh, within the uh, algebraic uh, thoughts and knowledge was quite devastatingly uh, low. So <laughs> they now what they wanted to see how, why that was, and what they could do to improve on the, uh, this condition. So they, uh, the researcher presented some uh, theories. For instance, that instead of having the uh, normal gets you have this equation solve them and uh, solve as many as possible there was one uh, article that suggested that you should have more a pictorial uh, learning curve not learning curve but uh, pictorial learning which means that as you can see up there you start with some more familiar symbols that you can more uh, rather relate to so i don't if i did point there up there it's a bit small you have the box that's a dragon box which uh, slowly translate into the X, which is the unknown, and then all the other symbols gradually start to translate more and more into the normal equation until they end up like this. So the thoughts about the game was that you, through this, or not about the game, but the, the, uh, the th theory about the pictorial, pictorial uh, representation was that through having this dynamic uh, change, you could learn easier and better. And they also represent the sensory stimulation theory, which is that uh, by uh, stimulating multiple senses, so for instance the visual, the feedback, the sound, all this, you end up learning more at the same time, or learning more than just purely, for instance, how sitting and watching the teacher talking, and then, then uh, after that start solving uh, equations. And it's got a laser pointer. So you can point out the street. Yep. Okay. Don't at you, not at your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then lastly, uh, the, 
on the prox uh, proximity de development, which we uh, talked about last week, uh, which basically was that they argued that uh, through games you could go beyond the zone of the uh, zone, of zone of proximal development, which uh, since a game encourages you to learn more, and learn harder things, with uh, since you know that you can retry and look up for clues on the internet or asking people. Um, a huge part of this uh, article was the retain model, which uh, was uh, going through the whole paper, which uh, because six parts or six six different aspects that a serious game or an educational game should have to successfully be actually learn be able to learn out learn the, the uh, knowledge to the users. So you have the relevance, which is how, what the methods, how relevant they are. And if, if, it, if they are in the context of what the students learn, because different, different schools and different uh, nations have different methodologies to how they learn about things. So something that works in one place doesn't work in the other, necessarily. And the embedding part, which is how the how does it? How does the uh, game use uh, fantasy element? For instance, fantasy elements or other elements that makes the user some more of a drift or gets live into the game, and which then creates the intrinsic motivation, that, which is the the whole reason you you want to have serious games because you need that initial that intrinsic joy of doing stuff and learning stuff. And translation, which is how can this? So, for instance, in this image here, you start with the dragon box, and that is a translation because it goes from the box to the X. That so that you, you have you solve the same type of the same type of problems, but with new elements, so that you can translate what you learn into something new. And the adaptation, which is either using exi existing knowledge to solve new problems, or Get, uh, get in new, create new knowledge because you might not have know how to solve a problem, but rather that you can use your existing knowledge to start to feel your way through and see if you can get to the answer by using applying the knowledge and immersion, which is basically engagement. How engaged do you feel in the game? And the naturalization with uh, part, which is um, sort of like the cognition that. For those who had uh, interaction design, know about the system one, system two, which is system one is your automatic reactions. For instance, when you drive a car and have driven for a few, a few years, you know what you're going to do. You don't think about it. You just it's in the back, your backbone. While the system two is more of a you need to evaluate and think long and hard of before doing something. So, for a serious game to work, you need a the concepts to be. Um, Get into you, no, not get into you, but uh, get be part of your reaction, so you don't have to think about them. And then uh, there's a little review about how games they have, they you know from past uh, articles and research that games can actually help uh, further the attitude attitude of uh, mathematics uh, with children or people in general. And there's a discussion about whether or not they started to relate to look at the algebraic uh, motivations and thinking because they started with that when they started to be 13 years old and that made a learning curve maybe a bit too steep. With the, then the ultimate goal was that can Dragon Box work at this? And in the hypothesis was basically that there should be a, they should see a clear significant uh, improvement in the in one of the groups for some reason. They didn't specify which, which group and that there should also be a difference between the start between there should be a difference between the groups and at start to the end so they should have learned during this project and with the methods being that they had two group experimental group which had the dragon box and the control group which just used the normal learning method methods and it was a project that went on for 16 hours and since they were looking at both the algebraic knowledge and the attitudes they had, 
a test to check the, the knowledge, uh, which is going to start at the end of the experiments, and the tests that we're looking more into what did, uh, what did the students think about algebra because it doesn't. It was a two-part project. It doesn't only help that they learn algebra; they should also feel like they know why they learn algebra. Because why learn something by when you don't know why you learn it? And then I was just going to quickly jump into my terrible gear, terrible emulator. Uh, so, for instance, you have the here. You have the no, 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 oh, sorry. Uh, let's see. Then I don't see anything because I messed up. But anyway, so this is a dragon box, and then it's like yeah. And then here you have the automatic stuff. So that they use the visual to say that this is a negative ne negative uh, value and this is a positive value. They are the same, so just map them. That's zero. You don't need that. So this is more the these matches are more of the uh, visualization part of the uh, game. So that's something you get uh, used to. And then you just see that, hey, it's like that. And then to go back, because I don't have time to go through all this, to see about more the translation, you go to the last game, then you suddenly have the X here, with the sparkling stuff that's around it, so that you still see. And then you're supposed to match, and then you get a bit more knowledge that, for instance, you need to uh, balance the equation, so that way you have, this is to the two parts of the equation. And then you click it around, and da 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 da. And then just to show how it goes a bit further, I'm going to. So you played all of this? Or yes. <laughs> I mean, you need to research. <laughs> <laughs> and and you got 3,000 on <laughs> you, pretty good. I mean, I'm an achiever. <laughs> <laughs> I think this would clearly indicate that your playstyle is achiever. <laughs> um, and then you start going parentheses. Which you can you can just do stuff inside them, or you can split them up, and then you can add, and then you can move around there. So here it's more complex. So when you move it over the equation, then you need to change the then you automatically change the value, and stuff like that. You can yeah do stuff. So that's the whole point of gradually expanding on it, and I need to. This because I need to now using my non existent notes. Uh, where there, I think. Yeah. So, um, not uh, so the result was that uh, both groups showed progress while the experimental group showed considerably more progress in the both their knowledge and their uh, attitudes towards the, uh, the algebra, and there were no difference in the pretest. So for some reason, so not, not uh, surprisingly, both group had the same knowledge before they started this uh, experiment, and there were a significant difference in post tests towards the the two groups. Uh, and so, normal, uh, naturally, they the discussion and conclusion uh, came through that or uh, uh, ended on that Dragon Box helped, and they had some insight in the discussion about that. Uh, no, when since they both groups knew about the other group, so for instance, they discussed that maybe because the control group knew that some the other group used some fun ways or fun uh, methodologies they got motivated to do more so that's a uh, kind of problem uh, they concluded that the retain model is something that you should think about when uh, uh, developing serious games because that's that seemed like uh, seeing that uh, this game used those elements it seems like a possibly a good way of doing it right. and that's uh, of course uh, they should possibly uh, change up the learning uh, methodologies in the school to maybe accommodate the 
these results and maybe look into how they could integrate them. So, Simon's wonderful questions. <laughs> These were my default questions, like the yes. more gen generic questions you can yes. ask. Right. So, the, the contribution of the paper. So, you get a clear indication of how intrinsic motivation in games can help engage and help the students get more motivated and towards learning. Uh, learning. And uh, well, old method might not be the best, even though it might feel safer. It's so that's something you also should think about when. Uh, and so they thought was that uh, you should always ev evaluate, uh, or you can some of the essence is that you should always evaluate old things and see it in regard to new technologies. And the return model again. Uh, looks like it would be p uh, quite important, uh, but at the same time, uh, it was one. What I found was that it was this was one of many papers on Dragon Box because it's I mean it's a highly rewarded game or rewarded acknowledged game, and what I also found that not which we will get I think we will get in the discussion later was that not all papers are that uh, positive towards the game, so. You, you might take this uh, result with a grain of salt or a, tea, a whole spoonful, but uh, at the same time, in regard to this paper and the, their results, Dragon Box seems to work. And, well, looking at the results, uh, only the results and not the, the outlying uh, other papers, uh, certainly. Uh, there's also a clear show that we. Dragon Box helps immensely more than normal teaching. Uh, normal teaching should be gone, and we should just play games. <laughs> uh, so, which is why I said good results use methods. So, when methods show that you get more better results of following new methods, you should use them. It is not that easy, but uh, looking at the paper, it should you should do that. Uh, some of the t title and abstracts. I found the title uh, rather a bit vague, uh, not as vague as uh, some of the other titles I found uh, <laughs> during this research. Yes. But at the same time, it was well. I don't remember what it was. Long. Yes. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, I'm just going to do that so that doesn't happen again. Uh, so they say something about uh, the oh, go away. Oh yeah, I'm just I'm okay. Uh, so they say something about the students' algebraic thinking and attitude towards algebra, but they don't say anything that it doesn't from the title doesn't tell me that they're going to use Dragon Box to improve those. It just say attitudes, uh, thinking, algebra, algebra, Dragon Box. So, but the but then the abstract. Oh well, sorry, it was too far. Uh, the title. Uh, no, the title, the abstract uh, helps clear up quite a bit, I found, because there they talk about some hit the problems. They, the abstract is, I found actually quite good because they talk about both the problems and the results. Because I, I found also that the abstract doesn't say anything about the results of the research paper. So, I make it. Uh, and it also sums up the most important aspects. And But I found that. The one thing I found missing was that even though they talk about quite a lot about the retain model, it doesn't say anything about it in the abstract. So that could be a problem. Not a problem, but I mean, that could make someone just move away from the uh, paper. Yeah, if, if you were searching for papers that use the retain model, right? so let's say you were saying, how is the retain model used, right? The abstract here would be you might go well I, I can't see anything in the abstract or the title about it so maybe they probably mention it somewhere in the paper but they don't use it right whereas mm -hmm. actually it's quite significant so yeah so i put on the left that found i didn't see anything missing from it yeah and repeat repeatability <laughs> well uh, <laughs> that leads us into a bit of a discussion on on the problems of the paper but yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean the game is avail available to everyone, but that's so. Even though it's a bit costly, 
you know, unless you get uh, you get to find get a solution with the developer. I didn't check into how easy that would be. Uh, but what I found was that even though at first reading I thought that well this should be rather easy to re uh, uh, repeat, I found that you don't know anything about the questions of the pre or post tests uh, to avoid attitudes. It's they suddenly get something in the discussion about how how useful do you feel algebra is, for instance. So the list of there, but you didn't get the clear list of what the, all the questions are, which is quite relevant. And the task they used for to check the knowledge, I that they just said that, well, it's based on the national or the international testing uh, organization and their tests and the school books and curriculum. But I don't know what that, th those are, so I can. Re it would be impo near impossible for me to re recreate, recreate that without contacting the authors. Um, also, they they said how long the session were, but was but uh, it just said sixteen hours. That's all. So I highly doubt that they went on for sixteen hours straight learning algebra in a single day. Yes. <laughs> So, but without any indication, you don't know how long the individual session were and anything like that. So, that's a bit hard. And since I use the stratified uh, sampling, which means that you select people to have a representative group, so they, they actually handpick people to uh, create the groups, but they didn't say anything about what they sampled on. So, it could be gender, grades, color of the shirts. And without knowing anything about that, it's a bit hard. So all in all, I would say that it's hard to recreate this uh, pr uh, this experiment. And well, by their standards, yes, because it, it shows great results, and they the retain model shows that uh, they should use. Uh, gamifying uh, use uh, game elements or gamify stuff, but at the same time, something that it wasn't uh, talked about in the paper that was, uh, but was talked about in the actual actual, uh, actual research paper for the retain model itself. They talked also talked about a bit about how you shouldn't just rely on the game. You should use games as a extra tool to promote learning, rather than just say, "Here's a game, play it." So, even though the game finding elements in the game might be helpful, it should, at the same time, not solely rely on them and try to use game finding elements everywhere. It should rather be a Uh, addition. Yes, addition. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I think that's that. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So you already brought, brought in some of those those um, uh, potential challenges in the repeatability section. So, Tom, your your take on like you can either go up there or we can just turn the video the tape around and point at you. Do you want to go and stand there or you? Ah, go and stand over, yeah. stand next to him. If you can straddle like a cable. <laughs> so, so, what was your take on the the near, like what the some of the problems with the paper? from that one school. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't I don't think so. I think that it was a rather small sample size and trying to doing that uh, having that uh, broad try they they used their conclusion about one school uh, just I think one one age group as well. Mm -hmm. So 
and trying to base that, use that as a base of uh, changing the whole learning style in the country and maybe of even further. That's a bit weak, in my opinion. Yeah. So, um, a, a, a basic conclusion, a, 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 a response is to say, it would be to say, oh, this, this would give strong indication that we should do further research, right? That there is like showing it working in one place means right. We should see if this is true for other schools yes. and other age groups and what percentage of the population this works for. Right. So, so they've hand, as you said, they've handpicked control of an experimental group, um, and so it's sort of quasi experimental rather than random distribution. Um, and like you might want to try larger populations, different populations, see if the effect, because they didn't really dig into were the individuals who benefit significantly from this, right? So is like, um, if you if you look at, at beneficial effects, if, if um, I gave you all Ritalin, right? Um, apparently about 70% of you would benefit from Ritalin, right? Um, because that would help you focus. Um, but the 70% who the drug doesn't really help at all. Um, now, if I then just average, measured your average performance, I'd say, oh, look, average performance has gone up, right? But, you know, I could also do, um, if there was a drug that targeted ADHD really well, right? And so for the 10% of you who have ADHD, it targeted those people, and they got like 100% improvement, right? They doubled their performance. And I gave that to everybody, and the population went up 10%, because those individuals lifted the whole population average. It might not affect 90% of you, but the population average went up because they just averaged everybody into the one number, yeah. and so it's just an average. So, like, that doesn't say, like, how specific is this effect for specific groups? So, yeah. but, okay, yep, that's good. Yeah, uh, in addition, um, the most common teaching strategy in Malaysian school are imitation and repetition. If a school weren't using those uh, teaching techniques, do you think the results would be the same? Well, leading back to the last question, that's a bit hard with that small sample size knowing. So I would say that's impossible to say. So what, what are you, the rest of the audience thoughts on the comparison? So do we have anybody from, we don't have any Malaysians in here. <laughs> here. Um, but uh, people who went to schools that were more like drill and repetition and copy. So, uh, like the Norwegians, you guys were more conceptual or were you drill and rehearse and copy? I remember drill, rehearse and copy. Right, so you were rehearse and copy yeah. a lot. And some of the others were more conceptual? Yes, but I mean, I went to the alternative school, so <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a part of their philosophy that you should use representation rather than uh, instruction. As they said, uh, to, uh, they said it uh, yesterday at the military camp. That's the way of the Norwegian army to learn something really uh, well, uh, that they drill on it and practice over and over and over so that you can do it in a really stressful situation in yep. a war uh, where you have a lot of other things to think about. Same piece of equipment. So, and as I said, the leopard tanks are like 82, 
So, um, you know, it's been that equipment for 30 odd years, 35 years, right? So it's, you know, it's not changing. Well, it changed a little bit, but it's, it's very similar. Whereas with maths, you're often given new situations or you've got, you're, out, like you're trying to work out a new calculation. So it's more building blocks than it is just repetition. But so the, the, the question I have there is, and uh, is kind of, and your question was, if you were more like um, Talia's school, and you're already doing a representational math where it's all symbolic and you're already kind of doing a lot of the things that Dragon Box are doing. Are you likely to see the same improvement given, you know, it's it's not that much different, right? Because the game is very different to uh, to the current education. So yes, your response is, can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, um, so the rest of you, do like, does the Norwegian school you go, go through, do you think Dragon Box would have been better? Or yeah, for some of you are definitely yes. For me at least, but I, I'm not saying the whole school would uh, necessarily benefit from it, but uh, yeah. well, I mean, you know, it's, does it benefit only the struggling students, or do the students that are completely fine with the math get the same benefit? Yeah. Yeah. So you, yeah, so to some extent for the results, you would like to see a breakdown on how much it was helping and who, rather than just did they have an overall percentage improvement? Yeah. I would maybe say that it's it, when I read that it, it seemed that it would be more help more helpful to the, those struggling because it's all the the build up and there at the pages or the, the hope that it says learn algebra in one hour and stuff like that. So at, at the basic level, of course. But when what what I found what I actually found quite stress uh, stressful and not stressful but irritating when starting up was that since you unlock your new abilities through the game I did I couldn't do stuff that I was nor <laughs> what I was trying to do at the start of the game because I know I can move things about on the other side of the equation and change the design, the design yeah. yes. but it, it didn't let me because that's not something I've learned the game yet so that was <laughs> that was frustrating uh, and that's an interesting question around game design uh, and also the way games work versus the way narratives work. Um, and some of you will have had um, first year programming at Jervik. So who are the first year programmers at Jervik? Okay. Oh, no, oh, no, not programmers, but... All right, yeah, so, yeah, so first year programming at Jervik. Um, Froda had that approach where um, he would let you use parts of the language that he hadn't taught you yet, right? Which can be, <laughs> can be very frustrating. Yeah when if you come in as a programmer so yeah when you come in knowing algebra this is very frustrating yeah. if you don't know anything about that algebra you would never notice that and so you'd yeah. never be frustrated by it so it's a yeah um it is an active question is like do should you restrict people from doing things just because you haven't allowed them to do that yet right mm -hmm. so in games they often do because they want to make a like the challenge the current challenge difficult right so because if they gave you like a massive weapon that just gave like thousands of damage and you just shoot every new like all the enemies for the first five levels it'd be this is really dull right I just one shot everything um, so you kind of make it harder because you need to balance the difficulty but that sort of I guess works better in games because usually you haven't played the game before you play it for the first time so sure it might have a great difficulty but yep. it doesn't necessarily um, like you don't know any better when you start playing the game for the first time, so yep. you're not missing features that you didn't know existed. Yeah, so it certainly has that challenge when it does that restriction, yeah. right? And and that's uh, it's a hard choice, right? Because you still got to have an engaging game. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So um, this study was split into an experimental group and a control group. Yeah. I'm afraid that the teachers' expectations might have um, had an impact on the result. Like, for example, if the Pygmalion effect or Golem effect was contributing to the results? Well, I would say that's certainly a factor. Because teachers are human, and I mean, they wouldn't. And if I was trying to be a, the look at it as a teacher, I wouldn't like to see a game be better than me at <laughs> learning my stuff. So I would say that it might be either. So for try, I would either try to, or is that, wait, did, 
So those effects are for the students only, or is it a general? Because I know that uh, they are either you prefer perfect, uh, try to uh, not compensate, but do more or less based on mm, no the expectations based yes. on the students. Oh, okay. Because yeah. the students yes. want to improve or oh yes. So I would say that. <laughs> so I would think that as a teacher, I would try to make my students do more to not get beaten by a bloody game. So <laughs> first. And and th that might have both positive and negative uh, effects on the students. So that's to do with blinding, right? So double blind and medical experiments is yeah. where neither, like, both the experimenter and the, the patient doesn't know what's going on. Single blinds are usually the patient doesn't know what's going on, but the experiment yeah. does. It, it, like, you could, to some extent, try uh, a single blind the other way, where the students know they're playing a game, because right? it's, it's really hard to, <laughs> to to get a thing where the students don't know they're playing a game, right? So being double blind is not going to work, right? Um, but you could have it that the the um, students will be taken out of their normal class and go to another class, and those people had no interest or no objective like engagement with the students other than to mod, like to to babysit them, right? And some of them were a math teacher that was just going to teach normal math, had no idea that there was another experiment going on, and then the Dragon Ball group, who again had no experiment, like, yeah, so, so just managing them, and then came back to the normal classroom, so the normal teacher wouldn't know which group was in, so you try and blind your normal teacher to it. But that's going to be hard and require a lot of organisation. So basically, yeah, um, you have both things. One is the teacher might put more effort into the the, um, the students who are doing the paper stuff because they don't want to be beaten. Uh, you could have the kids doing the, if they know about each other, the kids who like playing games might want to do more, like say, yeah, the great game was great because I want more of this. Like, I prefer this than having to sit in front of the teacher. So they may have overemphasized and tried even harder to try and make the game look good so they could get more of the game, even if the game wasn't necessarily as good as they're making out. So, so yeah, and the game is novel, so there's the novelty effect of, you know, it's, this is the first time they've used the game for, for learning. Just that it's different might be an encouragement. Um, and so maybe, yeah, if, if teaching, you brought in a new teacher or, you know, you did the the teaching as usual, but in a new and innovative way, maybe it's just the innovation that's that's engaging rather than it being a gap. So. Yep, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's this other article. It's called uh, Gamification of Joint Student Slash System Control Over Problem Selection in a Linear Equation Tutor. That result. Terrible title. They're really good with yeah. titles these papers, yeah. Yeah, um, anyway. <laughs> this is article uh, mm -hmm. did a test of their um, game for more like a teaching system. Yeah. Uh, they compared that with Dragon Box. Um, they found that uh, Dragon Box uh, in their experiment was ineffective in uh, teaching algebra. Uh, they found that the game didn't uh, the learning from the game didn't translate into actual uh, actual mathematic skills. Yeah. So how would you uh, defend? <laughs> <laughs> Can you do it? Well, yeah. I mean, I could do the easy thing and say that paper is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the methods are wrong. Fight, fight, fight! <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that you could bring that back to, because I know that they did the experiment in did it in USA? America? I don't remember exactly, but at least there was not in Malaysia. So mm -hmm. you can bring that back to the whole thing that so, something that works in one, one group or one uh, school or whatever might not necessarily work in other in other, in other uh, area. Area, area. Sorry. And so that we be wrong. What might be one thing? Uh, I mean. If I remember, because I read that as well. So, <laughs> obviously. So, if I remember remember correctly, they did it for a shorter period of time as uh, than this article or the project. So, that could be the 
that they, even though I know that they, because one of the things they emphasized was that even though the students had solved a lot of more uh, equations or than the, those who use the teaching uh, system, they, I think they solved four times as many equations than the teaching system. And uh, even though the, that might be, it's, it, it could be that they, they didn't get fur, uh, far enough, because, uh, so that the progress in the game was didn't have the same, didn't pull the same progress as the teaching assistant because they they also they also looked at different parts of using reward and whatever. So they did so some different aspects of it. So that might be it that. Well, I was just hard. But w and one thing I w was thinking about when reading that article is that they wanted to check their system up against an other system. So there could certainly be some bias either in the in the res results or, for instance, that they, the 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 pre post tests they chose was tailored more towards their teaching system rather than the dragon box. So those who uh, use the teaching system had a not a preference, but a advantage. Adva advantage in when it came to the actual test. So, I, in, in general, you guys didn't read the other paper, right? Um, but, uh, well, I, so I didn't read that particular paper, but I know that negative result papers existed for Dragon Box, so I was, that's why I told them to go and read <laughs> other papers. Um, so, I, this, and, and this is a problem, like any time you do a piece of research, particularly on a popular piece of software, um, you eventually will find some people do another piece of research saying, well, no, we didn't find any result, right? Uh, and um, this is how science progresses, right? Science will have multiple competing um, evidence, uh, and you try and rationalise as well, why are these different? Um, and I think I think you're, you're correct uh, in, in the post-test, pre-test, right? Because they were looking at curriculum, and they, tr they built their system around the curriculum that was required to be taught. Therefore, they're teaching what needs to be known for that test. Whereas Dragon Box is more just a generic thing. It was built from a French guy in Norway who wasn't a te who had done some teaching in Norway and done some teaching in France, but was just trying to generate general algebra rather than specific um, problems. And we have the second argument around efficiency. Right, which was also, as you said, limited time. Um, I had, so last week when I was talking to the PhDs in, in, in Trondheim, one of the, the challenges there was about cheating in exercise. Right? So, and, and so they were wanting to make the exercise as efficient as possible. Right? Because that's the way therapists work. And this is why they say in the school day, you only have half an hour for algebra. Right? So we want that half hour to be as effective as possible because you've only got half of um, The counter that, well, you know, but if the kid takes it home and chooses to play Dragon Box over watching, um, uh, um, like, some random Vol um, uh, Voltron television or something, right? Um, so if they're choosing to do this over other activities, maybe an hour of this is worth 20 minutes in the classroom, but they actually will do this additional hour, right? Um, and so, and for exercising for the elderly, if you had 20 minutes of pain that you really didn't want to do every day, or an hour of fun, which one are you more likely to do every day? 20 minutes of pain or an hour of fun? So efficiency isn't really like the ultimate goal of gamified activities necessarily. It's not that they're a faster way of doing something. It's just that they might be able like more enjoyable, they might you might actually allocate time to it, might you look forward to it, you have a better opinion of it. So it's not as efficient, but it is more effective if you spend more time on it. Right? So um, yeah, that and that that's a different way of thinking. And a lot of teachers and a lot of um, household people don't think in that like they think in efficiency rather than kind of overall effectiveness. So that would be another counter to the why why would their system be better? Well maybe they're measuring it on like how efficient, because they limit the time. Yeah. So, other thoughts on, on, so given that you have a paper here that, that says Dragon Box wasn't useful for their situation, but their own learning system was, 
what would like what would your thoughts be? Are they similar to ter to terriers of maybe they're testing what they want to test and there might be some bias in it? Yeah. Uh, thank you. It's also a good point that you have to play it a long time before you actually uh, and they I I played it uh, I played the first chapter mm -hmm. some yeah. And uh, it didn't really start translating anything into actual algebra for people who aren't really familiar with algebra. Yeah. Uh, I think you need to when when does uh, how many chapters before you actually start doing real equations or? Well, it will depends on what, that depends on what you mean about real equations because yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, so I think yeah, you showed that after four hours was it that uh, where it started look, looking like uh, real. Uh, not just pictures of dragons yeah, and, so and uh, Yeah, I think that mustard. was, I think, about around. So that uh, some part of it was that they introduced it to it. So they, the way it goes is that you have a, a um, concept, and then it gets translated more and more into equations that go back again. So it's a bit hard to say, but I think they started to look kind of like that around level five or something. Yeah. And uh, that the real algebra that was the last image there, I haven't gotten to that yet, and I'm at level six, so okay, yeah. oh, on ten, of oh, ten. So I think I okay. estimate around eight, nine. They start to really go translated into real equations. Yeah, but then it can be four hours until you uh, get to that because uh, I played it for like twenty minutes and I uh, almost didn't complete the first chapter. So uh, yeah, yeah it, it takes a long time. Yeah. yeah. And so it's not necessarily very efficient. Is the oh, it doesn't it doesn't teach you just what you need to know in the shortest amount of time. But hopefully it's more enjoyable and just that yes it takes you a bit longer, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, it's like if you were doing gym exercises versus playing a game of soccer, right? Or football, right? You might play a game of football and have fun for um, an hour and a half. Or you could probably get the same physical training effect by going to the gym for thirty five thirty five minutes or forty minutes, right? So also depends on the internalization of the of the uh, curriculum itself. Like you get for for people who prefer to like work with those things sort of as symbols and not as repetitions and hard rules, being able to actually you know work with it in the imaginary space for as long uh, for longer allows you to sort of use more time to grasp the actual concept of it, not necessarily how we apply it first. Binary. I um, I was using flower and rock. So you have flowers and rocks, and that's binary, because it could be flowers and rocks. <laughs> um, no, that vertical line in a circle isn't anything special. So yeah, but yeah, it, however we treat it as special, and so it does create some challenges. Um, okay, so final questions from like so, I do you have more questions or you have quite a few more? Um, well, there are, I have some. I have some. Well, um, we'll, well, what we'll do is we'll we'll get any questions from here, then we'll take a break, right? <laughs> so, okay, so questions from... Did you guys have any questions other than what you've seen here? Stefan? No? Okay. Uh, there's just one I'm wondering about, mm -hmm. um, which is the way to look at the significance level. This is probably the sort of the Stefan map, but it sort of annoys me when you just say zero. Uh, so because it, when they talk about the significance level, they just go like, yeah, no, the significance level is zero, 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 and then they have a star, uh, which shows, you know, and then it says in the explanation, like, yeah, the, the actual score is less than that, you know, significant alpha, or the significance level, which where I go, like, okay, so are you saying that it's straight zero here, that, like, there's literally no way that you can actually get this result in the case that your hypothesis wasn't correct, or are you just saying, seeing that as it does it on like every time the significant uh, it's significant it sort of removes results which makes me then go okay are you removing it because you know it actually is zero or are you, or are you just sort of like zeroing out because obviously it's less than a significant level so we don't actually need to know what it is right so the the p there is is basically the probability that it yeah. came up from just random sampling right 
So what they're saying is, down to two decimal places, yeah. there is no possibility that this comes about from random stuff. Right? So there was an actual effect, right? Whether the effect is repeatable or whether it was caused by, you know, they gassed the kids who were doing the, the normal paper stuff. Um, <laughs> And so, you know, um, that's why they did so badly. But, um, yeah, it doesn't say why why that probability was there. It just says that it wasn't random sampling yeah. that caused this difference. So having a, a, the P0, I'm assuming you're talking about it. Yeah. But then... It's just, no, it's like, uh, yep. it's just that it's like every time they discuss it, it's yep. sort of zeroed out. So it's like, okay, is it really that small for all the different tests you did? Or... Uh, I mean, they had some tests that, were, that weren't significant... Yeah, so they yeah. have like a P of 74. Yes. Um, yeah. So the P of 74 is basically saying there is a like there is a subtle difference between the pretest scores, right? which is a 3.9 and a 13.2 a, a, a and a 13.5. Um, so very small difference, um, degree to freedom, and a 74% chance. They're, so they're pretty certain that that comes out just because it was two different samples. It's very likely that it was just that they put people in different groups without picking, picking a particular feature. Right? Um, so yeah, so that's that, that, yeah, that. So they do have some high peaks, but the post test is saying definitely a diff a measurable difference between the two groups. Uh, now, again, for you guys doing stats, um, measurable difference doesn't mean significant difference. Um, you'll see the word significant difference used often but they mean statistically significant, but they just drop the word statistical in front of that. And that's this, for me, that's a problem, because if, if the standard deviation on your 13.2 was 0 0.001, and your standard deviation on 13.5 was 0 0.001, you could have that they were significantly different, even though they're like only 0.3 different. It's not, it's that the difference is very small, but it's it's easily measured, right? Because they don't vary. However, here they do vary enough, so you're going to have measurement there, right? So, so you kind of have to think twice when you see significantly different. Um, is it statistically significantly different? Is what we mean. Okay, we'll take a break for ten minutes and come back at uh, twenty past, and you can present the second paper. So. So we'll have the stream back in 10 minutes and I'll just, shall I break it into two parts? Yeah.